Hello folks, welcome back to the workshop. Today we have something new for you. A new tool on for a pair. This is the Makita Hedge Cutter. The DUH502. And this one is supposed to be a warranty repair. Awkward things to have on the workbench. It's actually a 2021 machine. The customer says it's under warranty though. Either he has the long three year warranty or he's actually just bought it recently. The shop maybe had it on the shelf for a while. But he says it's not running and it needs to be repaired. So let's see what it's actually doing. Now, this is just an 18 volt hedge trimmer. You do also get these on a 36 volt. The battery actually goes in sideways instead of straight from the back. Makes it a wee bit shorter. Switch it on first. Right enough, doing nothing. Now she swivels too. So you can set your angle, make it more comfortable to work with. That's not going to affect the motor, mind you. Don't know what that is. Right, nothing. Not switching on. So hopefully it's going to be something simple like a switch or the switch for the safety here. Normally it's always this here switch, the actual safety lever, either in the cordless or the corded machines. Normally this is what gives trouble first. Maybe it's just not activating. This has to be on before it'll allow you to start the motor. So we'll check that. We'll check this switch. After that, could we get onto a controller? So new tool. Now the question is, how do you get onto it? So this is swiveling, so it must mount it onto this body. So this has to open before I can open that, I would imagine. So I'll lead onto this switch. Well, I suppose I'm going to have to open the whole thing, but I'll probably another switch on here. So these are two covers that come off. Before I can take this off, I have to take this off. Before I can take this off, I have to take this handle off. That's part of the gearbox for the cutter. So it must be just two screws to take this here lever off. It looks like we start at the very end. There's two screws here. Probably take this little plastic cover off. Yep. Oh, bolt here too. Nothing on there, that's just a lever. So this must be pressing on a switch inside of here. So that's just two halves of a handle, two springs. And a wee rubber mount on top then. Acted as a damper for holding the front of the gearbox. So like the 36 volt model. Let's see this needs to come off first. Fair enough. It's not too bad. Let's get rid of that. So one switch here. That's not that. Got little contacts up on here. Not that switch anyway. Here 
Maybe it's this one. There's a nice forward and reverse on it. It's not that it's needed in this. It just must be the same type of switch out of a cordless drill. No, that's working anyway. Don't think that's going to matter. It's not the switches. Potentially the boards. Maybe I shouldn't have pulled that out. E butts flying everywhere now. No, it can't be them actually because they were powering up. So they're a separate little board. Look. One big connector, two together. See if that there on button wasn't working, you can replace them on their own, but it was powering up, and this was working as well. I was giving me a display, so it's not going to be that. The only one thing it's going to be is the controller itself. Now I'll pull out the thermal imaging camera and have a wee peek at it, see if it'll show us anything. Now you always be careful when you're plugging in the battery when you have everything disconnected like this. Just make sure nothing's lying against a metal body or anything. It's perfectly safe to actually plug it on, it's not going to do you any harm. But if this is lying against the body or something, lying against here in the controller, the metal contacts on the metal it could short out and actually blow the controller or blow the switch. So just be careful where everything's actually sitting. And as well, we have to do these in sequence too. To activate this switch, and then this switch to actually turn this on. Just keep everything away from the actual cutting head up here, just in case it does actually switch on and cut something. As long as it's not your fingers, you should be alright. Power it up. So you can see the heat from my finger is actually touching the button. A little hot spot there already, look. Not much, but it's something. See now, it's hotter again now. Did try it on, mind you. Yeah, that's the problem there. The hot spot on the board. So this going to need a controller. Right, we'll price this up, see how much it's going to cost, but it shouldn't really matter anyway because this boy says this is under warranty. Right, it's not too bad for spare parts, you can get everything for it. Everything inside the gearbox, even all the wee screws and rubber bushings and all, wee packers, you can buy everything for it, even the plastic guard for the top of it. Generally most of these things aren't going to go wrong, and the wee rubber dampers over here though. And all the components inside the gearbox. The blade cutter is one piece, mind you. But of course, for this man, it has to be the most expensive part that looks to have failed. The controller. That costs about 200 euro, including the VAT, to buy that there on its own. So you're talking just over half the price of the machine to replace that there. This actual 502 H cutter costs about 300 to 350 to buy. So might still be worth it to do it on your own, but that'll be pricey enough to fix. We'll also check the field because that there is actually sold separately. So if your controller is okay and your field is burnt out, 
you can still replace this on its own. That there's a lot cheaper. This might be expensive, but it'll be more expensive if the other parts weren't separate. The two switches and the wee control board and the stator, they were all together. This would be way more expensive, but you can actually buy them separately. There are your switches, and that's your wee on off power button up in here, battery retainer. Everything else is actually separate on it. But that, of course, is expensive, but. First thing we'll do is just check the stator for the field. Because if we're replacing this controller, we have to take this out anyway. But just in case it's burnt up. Sometimes it'll have been ran for an awful long time and overworked and overheated. It can start to cook. So this is a wee separate motor unit. If they do cook, if you overheat them, they start to burn. And the actual resistance inside the winding will be that high. It'll need too much extra amps for the actual controller to run the motor. So the controller relays are too much amps get onto it and just won't let you run it. That's the way to actually save your controller. That. But to do that, you need to be running this thing for an awfully long time. I mean, for hours on end. Fence and side aren't even blocked up actually. It's one thing you do need to watch out for for any cordless gardening tool, it's clippings and leaves and whatnot. And get sucked under the motor and block these vents, cause it to overheat. It's not the problem here. A little tiny rotor. But it's a brushless motor, it doesn't need to be big. And of course, one of the main things I like about Makita tools, good quality bearings. It's an NMV bearing on the bottom. Good quality brand. Oddball size, mind you. 1350. I don't know if you see them on there. Tiny little bearing for it. But the stator actually looks fine. There's nothing actually wrong with that. So it's not the stator. That is definitely the controller. Right, we have to take this part anyway to replace the controller. So so I'll take it off. That is part of the controller itself. That's the Hall Effect sensor board. Three Hall Effect sensors for actually picking up the magnetic field from the rotor. Got a little bit of debris in here, but not much. A couple of leaves in that. As you'd expect, these three screws to take out then. You just hold the heavier leads in and actually take the current for running the motor. Hoping these are on a little block. Yeah. Actually, all together in this little plastic block, so there's no mixing up the colours. Sometimes you take these apart, they could be sitting a few weeks before the part comes on. You can forget which way the wires go. Pop that off the back. Keep the stator. That's part of the controller. Get rid of this for now. Right, see if I have one of these. There we go. Didn't think I had it there for a second. This was actually a little bit confusing, I had to ring the supplier in this one. The part number for this here, this actually was not coming up. Yeah, this 818-3, this was up online for this part number and my breakdown. But, don't have it, can't really see it in stock, the supplier has no record of it at all, they can't get it. That's because... That's the number there. It's actually been changed. That's the new number, 620K06-4. So this one, the original one, this here, must actually have some sort of fault in it or something that was giving trouble. 
Joe Makita must have had a few of these unfair warranty repairs before. They realised what the problem was and they've corrected it. And they've taken out a brand new controller instead. This is what Makita does. And this is why you want to buy from a brand that actually does warranty repairs and not just hand you out a new machine every time. We know a lot of the cheap and cheerful brands, you don't get spare parts for them anyway. But some of even the big brands, we know which one I'm talking about. The nasty red one. Even them ones, sometimes never something goes wrong with it. If it fails, they'll actually just hand you a new machine instead of repairing it. It's handy for you because you're getting a new machine in your hand. But in the long run, for your faith in that brand, it isn't all that great. Because when they hand you a new one, they don't actually know what's gone wrong. And it shows that they don't actually care what's gone wrong. Whatever components fail, they don't care. They're not logging it and taking a record of it. They're just giving you a new machine. No good. That means that problem, if it's a recurrent fault, just keeps on going. Never gets fixed. If a brand actually fixes their tools, repairs the problem, Makita, obviously, if this went wrong with other machines, they would have put it on their warranty repair. They can see what part keeps getting sold on their warranty repair. They can see that that there must be a problem. They'll address the problem, fix it, take out a new part. So whenever people buy the new one, they won't have the same problem. That's what you want on a brand. You don't want them to just ignore the problem. So that is why I couldn't get the number. The seer number 6208 18-9 is now obsolete. I've updated it to a new one. Exact same part, just with some sort of change inside. Right, so the hard bit of this job is just getting the wires back into the right locations. Because this is all just folded up inside a bag. So it's not that way. Put it in this way. Put the patch retainer over here. This orange lead fine wires and the white lead, the actual motor and the switch all over to this side and everything else is tucking up here to the front. And it'll be like that. So you want to just get your wires roughly where they need to be. So that'll be your retainer. That's for your motor. This will be for your switch. I'm a wire missing. So this is one switch. This is the other switch. Yeah. So this orange cable then has to connect the two. Right. That out. This time it's a red cable instead of a blue one. So the end must be facing back the same way. That out. the white one. Lastly, the power board. That retainer as well actually. Little spring tabs on the on the back of these. 
this little spring lock to push that on to release a little pin over here otherwise you can't pull these off they're very difficult to get out That's me. Switch down here. Pass there sits in there. Tenor. Should just slide down there. Done that wrong. I should be facing the other way. I should just be facing down instead. Controller, plenty of room for the connector. Don't have any of the wires been stretched or strained. They are very light wires. So that's down there. So can I finish off this end before doing this side? I wonder. No reason why not, is there? A lot handier if I could actually get the cover on and screw it together to keep all this in place. I suppose there's no reason why I can't. Yeah, chance at. Now this mechanism is going to be the lock for rotating your handle. Some spring in here. A pin there. So that has to go on that way and then a little plastic piece that obviously has to drop on top of that pan it's just your switch lever actually activate the switch spring for your lock and for your switch that should be it me hopes it goes together quite nice That on. Less parts laying on the bench, the better. Just because this is a clip, you can't put that on back to front. they're good and tight because that's what's giving the actual electrical contact There's little plastic tabs on here we pins three of them actually locate this here board on top obviously the 
Hall effect sensors face down onto the motor. But you can't actually fit them wrong anyway because this isn't symmetrical. You can only fit it the right way. Otherwise it wouldn't lie down flat. Blow that housing out, make sure there's no dust on it. That needs to go onto this. And again, NMB bearings on it. Ah, right. Wrong way round. Was on top, these are on here. That's sitting there. All of us must go up and around. First one, give me the switch. Gonna be down there. Get the rest of your wiring on. So that's sitting there. That's gonna go on top. Have your wires in. Can help hold down the lighter ones. Like a glove, perfect fit. So obviously it was designed to move and then dampers, but obviously not that much. So this here, bolted the fronts for, was to actually hang it off. I see a rubber damper there. This is on first, it has to go onto the switch obviously, this is what's activating that switch. That's in there. Need this bolt first. We'll screw it on first, might help line it up.
giving you a flex. And lastly then, two bolts on top. I think that's it. On Nikita DUH 502 18 volt cordless hedge cutter. And let's see if she actually works. Power on. Look at that. Actually, a nice wee machine. Nice solid action on the actual cutters. Nice wee machine. Not sure what this is for, mind you. What's that meant to be doing? Or this just reverses it. Oh uh, yeah, reverse. Right, that makes sense. So if you actually jam up your blades, if you get a heavy stick or something, and you actually can't get through it, and it jams the blade solid, you can't get it out. You can push that button and they'll turn the blades quick half a turn just to separate them so you can get the debris out only does it once as soon as you get it to move the blades it goes back into drive mode again so you press it you get a blinky light once you pull your trigger the blades move backwards then you can keep going then that's a good idea Good job. That's her. One new controller. And a Makita DUH 502 18 volt cordless head trimmer. All that costs around 200 euro buy and do yourself. This one is actually under warranty, so this isn't going to cost the customer anything. That's it. That's how you dismantle them and work on them, put them back together again. So if you ever have a problem with it, that's how you actually take it apart, put all the bits back in again. It's actually quite a nice machine to work on. Looks a bit complicated, because you've basically got three separate assemblies. But it's actually quite straightforward and well laid out. Actually a nice machine. I think that's a hole as well. We're actually hanging on the wall. You have a screw sticking out. Hook it onto a wall and drop it on. Just for handy storage. That's nice. But anyway folks, thanks for watching. That's her up and running again. As always, give us a wee like and a follow if you're enjoying the content folks. And if you want to help out the channel, hit that like and subscribe button as well down at the bottom. Thanks for watching. That'll keep this man cutting here now. Might as well keep my battery. That's her.